Hi, and welcome back to SysNav Training. In this video, we're going to walk through the control module within System Navigator. The control module is the meat of the SysNav app, allowing you to remotely control an L-Class line array system, as well as get access to real-time telemetry throughout an event. The first thing we need to do in order to take full advantage of the controls within SysNav is optimize and reconcile our array. For more information on this process, please go check out the SysNav inventory training video. Once you've connected and reconciled, you can access the control module either by clicking the Connect and Control button on the home screen, or by pressing the Menu button and selecting Control. Within the control module, you will see four tabs across the top of the screen, which can be used to access meters and telemetry and network information. The audio screen will display all of your connected arrays and loudspeakers, which can be expanded or collapsed using the arrows. When an array is expanded, you will see the total number of loudspeakers in the selected array. Here we see network status and audio meters for both analog and digital signal input, whether you're running audio via analog XLR or Dante. Over here we have the output level and limiter gain reduction meters. If using Dante, the device patch from Dante controller will also be shown here. The ID button can be used to quickly identify specific loudspeakers in an array. When an ID button is pressed, the front and back LEDs as well as the screen on the corresponding loudspeaker will begin to flash. To adjust the gain on an array, simply select it in the list and use the large fader to bring the level up or down. Any loudspeaker or array selected will also display the output level and limiter gain reduction in the large meters next to the main fader. You'll notice that the gain controls for all of the loudspeakers in an array move in unison. When connected together in an array, the gain controls are linked together and act as one. You have the ability to mute loudspeakers and arrays, as well as the ability to mute individual loudspeakers within an array. This could be useful for troubleshooting purposes. We can also switch this function to solo mode, in which case the mute buttons become solo buttons and you can now solo out individual loudspeakers. Moving over to the telemetry screen, we can see the AC voltage, operating temperature, and amplifier status of all the loudspeakers in this system. On this screen, you still have access to the mute and gain controls, as well as the ID buttons. On the SysNav network screen, you will see pertinent information about the SysNav network, including IP address, MAC addresses, and subnet masks for all the loudspeakers connected in the system. You can also view the gateway by toggling the switch from subnet to gateway. The Dante tab is nearly identical, which will display the IP and MAC addresses, subnet masks, and gateways for the Dante network, which is separate from the SysNav network. On this screen, you can also see device patches from Dante controller if Dante is being used to send audio digitally. All right, let's get into the drill down screens where we can see additional system information and apply or change DSP settings in arrays and individual loudspeakers. To access the drill down, press or click on the name of a loudspeaker or array in the list from any one of the control screens. For our example, we'll use an array. In the drill down, we have three tabs at the top of the screen, settings, array, and EQ and filters. In the settings screen, you can view and adjust basic settings on the array, such as the array name, high pass filter, delay time and distance, the input sensitivity, LED mode, and brightness. If you are viewing settings for an individual loudspeaker or subwoofer, you can also run the diagnostic test and perform a factory reset right from this screen. If working with an array, these options will be grayed out. This screen will also display the current firmware version that is running on the loudspeakers in the array. On the array screen, we have information on the selected array's current configuration and optimization settings. In the center of the screen, we can see the array with the number of boxes it contains, along with the network status indicators, ID buttons, and mutes. If you followed the reconciliation procedure outlined in the SysNav inventory training video, the array should show that it's in an optimized state based on the number of boxes and the display angle configuration displayed on the left under the deployed column. If you haven't yet seen the inventory training video, I strongly recommend you go check it out. Once reconciled, we can manually set a high pass filter if subwoofers are being used, as well as add architectural time delay if needed, right from this screen. We can also make adjustments to the high frequency shading throughout the array. While the internal optimization is going to be a very good starting point, some fine tuning of the array shading may be necessary depending on the physical location and acoustics of the performance space and the relationship between the array and the audience areas. You could boost the high frequency towards the top of the array to increase that coverage in the back, or 
Maybe the people in the front are getting a little too much high frequency and it's becoming an unpleasant experience. You could cut some high frequency in the bottom few boxes of the array to balance that out better. You can choose between boosting or cutting at 1500 Hz or 5K and then click or tap into the gain boxes next to each loudspeaker to enter the amount of gain you want to add or subtract, up to plus 3 dB down to negative 6 dB. You can punch the high frequency shading in and out for each box with the toggle switches or turn the shading to the entire array on and off using the compare button. One important note regarding the high frequency shading is that if at some point you make adjustments to your physical array, such as changing angles or changing the number of boxes in the array, you will need to re-reconcile the array as a new array, per the protocol outlined in the inventory video. This process will wipe out the high frequency shading information across the system. If you do this, make sure to make note of your high frequency shading data before you proceed with that process. If you make changes to your array and don't have time to run through the reconciliation process, or if you want to audition different angle configurations quickly or without losing your high frequency shading information, you can toggle over to the designed optimization option. The designed side of the optimization allows you to enter the array angle values manually and then push the RQ optimization to the array based on that configuration, overriding the deployed configuration. On the EQ filter screen, we have a six band parametric EQ with high and low pass filters. If you set a high pass filter already from either the array screen or the settings screen, that will be displayed here as well. And vice versa, if you set the high pass filter from this screen, you will see that reflected on the array and settings screens as well. The high pass filter function can be controlled from any of these screens. One important thing to note is that the EQ will always default to off in a new design or any design in which the EQ has not yet been activated. To activate the EQ, simply toggle it on using the switch in the upper right corner. Once toggled on, you can save the design and the EQ will be active whenever the design is recalled. For each filter, we have the standard frequency, gain, and bandwidth or Q controls. Tap or click into each field to adjust these parameters. Or select a filter and adjust the frequency and gain directly from the graphic. At the top, we have a reset button and different display options for the EQ graphic. Individual will display representations of each individual filter's settings, while composite will display the overall curve for the entire EQ. You can view these modes simultaneously by selecting both. Again, when making changes to DSP settings, make sure to save those within your design if you wish to recall those same settings again. Another important note regarding EQ filters and delay settings. If EQ and filters is applied to SysNav and then the array is run offline, the EQ filters or delay will still be applied. You must disengage these settings from the rear user interface if you do not wish to use those DSP settings. Even if the boxes and arrays are set up in a different order, the EQ and filters will remain even post optimization from the RUI. If, however, boxes from one design are combined with boxes from another design with different or no EQ and filter settings, the optimization process will blow out the EQ and filters on the new array. EQ and filter settings do remain saved within a design file, however, and can be reapplied once the new array is reconciled. For more information on creating and saving design files, please go check out our dedicated SysNav Design Files training video. And that covers everything for the control module in System Navigator. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.